Hi there, the name's Nico, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to beat the newest Pure Fiction Floor 3 fictitious wordsmithing. So for this Pure Fiction, the effect is you accumulate the amount of damage dealt by allies' follow-up attacks. When this damage amount reaches 100%, deal a set amount of damage to all allies. So for the first half, the main mob is the Void Rager Trampler with a bunch of other side mobs. All the enemies are weak to normal and imaginary, or physical and imaginary damage. Some are weak to fire, some are weak to ice, some are weak to wind, and some are weak to electricity. And for the second half, the main boss is the Decaying Shadow, with some other enemies as well. And all the enemies are weak to lightning. No, oh, that's why it's... All enemies are weak to lightning, and most of them are weak to wind as well. There's a couple exceptions. Some are weak to physical, some are weak to ice, and some are weak to fire. So, for the teams I recommend doing, I'll show the teams I use, which is Clara, Ting Young, Topaz, Dr. Ratio for first half. Second half, I did Akron, Kafka, Black Swan, Ruan Mei. These work perfectly fine you might be wondering about the second half i'll explain firstly so for the first half i put three follow-up attack characters with ting young here to buff there is damage and what you want to do is take the examination buff here examination buff makes it so that whimsicality no longer requires accumulated damage from follow-up attacks but instead the effect is damage boost is increased by 60 percent after every time an ally launches three follow-up attacks so because there's so many follow-up attack characters in this side, getting three follow-up attacks is no issue at all. And for the second half, you might be wondering, oh, only Kafka here has a follow-up attack. Why is this... How did you get 40k points with this team? So, there's a buff for this new Pure Fiction called Reductio Ad Adsurum, so, which says, apart from follow-up attacks, all other kinds of damage dealt by allies can also accumulate progress equal to 18% of the original damage amount. So this means if you have a team that does a high amount of damage and even if you don't have any follow-up attacks, you can still participate and get the whimsicality or the buff effect of this pure fiction. Because Acheron has hit the newest damage cap of all the characters in the game, getting this amount is actually no issue at all. From my own playing of this pure fiction, it takes about 600,000 damage if you use the Reductio Ad at Serum to get the Whimsicality to fall, or like the Lantern to fall down and do damage to everyone. Some team suggestions if you do not have these characters is Argenti. Argenti is a good character, but you're for this, the only thing is instead of doing a follow up attack, because Clara has the follow up attack for physical. You're going to probably have to use the Reductio Ad at Serum as well. And other character, I mean, Dr. Ratio, everyone has. He's free. He's normally not a pure fiction character because he is single target. But again, with the examination buff on and for this particular pure fiction, he actually works fine because you're mainly just relying on getting a lot of follow up attacks and the lantern to do most of the damage for you, not actually your team well maybe not most of the damage but like a good amount of damage and topaz is like a very really highly rated character for this new pure fiction because she's like follow-up attack character and if you have her e1 specifically which i will show you i do have her e1 for e1 as you can see any enemies that infected or who are, are inflicted by the proof of debt um will increase the crit damage of follow-up attacks on that target by 25% up to two stacks. So anytime you hit that target with a follow-up attack, they you your follow-up attack does 50% more crit damage to them, which is very, very nice, especially for this new Pure Fiction where you're going to have a lot of follow-up attack characters. So you can also technically use Dung Hung and Bibiter Luwei for the side as well with, again, the reduction add Absurum buff here if you do not have a well-built Clara or follow-up attack team. You could even ignore the physical weakness and just even do like Himiko, Himiko Herda 
here and just again rely on this examination buff to carry you through i'd say that's a little bit less recommended you most people probably have at least one clara by now if you've just pulled on standard banner or failed 50 50s pulling for limited characters so if you haven't had her built i would highly recommend building her as more pure fictions will probably have follow-up attack buffs in them and she's just great in pure fiction in general as she can hit multiple enemies with her skill and her she'll be doing damage even when it's not your turn with her follow-up attack for the second half this is an easy blade jing yuang situation blade and jing yuang both do follow-up attacks making second half probably very easy especially if you have both i put both of them on the same team blade is very sp friendly so you could just do like jing yuang blade ruan Mei, and you can do a healer or you don't even need a healer you could just do like ting young to buff jing yuan's damage for the first half if you got a venturine he's also a great option as he's a follow-up attack character who does imaginary damage as well which is what the first half all the enemies are weak to so that's another great option there's other follow-up attack characters such as as i said herda himiko um i mean jingyuan blade i mentioned shui yi kafka technically but i wouldn't even really consider kafka so but yeah those are the main follow-up attack characters on clara and topaz doctor ratio but i'm using them here i'm just saying other characters that i'm not currently using here so yeah those would be the team character or characters i would recommend if you don't have any of the characters that i'm using or a team comp like this as well you honestly don't really need sustain if you ever want me for at least one side the other side for my particular use case which i'll go over my character details you'll see for clara specifically she'll be the sustain on my team as she has her own personal light cone something irreplaceable which gives her a which allows her to restore her hp equal to eight percent of the wearer's attack Every, as long as she defeats an enemy or is hit by something it only triggers once per turn though unfortunately and that's the only downside i guess of this light cone because if she's getting hit multiple times per turn she's probably not going to be able to fully heal herself but this overall gives her a huge sustain as well as long as you stack attack on her and as you can see my clara has almost four thousand attack on it so eight percent of four thousand i mean is a little bit what's that 320 i believe a little bit less like probably like 310 i, I did some quick math rounding yeah stats wise if you want to see from here i'll go over them feel free to skip ahead if you do not care about playing stats at all uh you can just see crit rate for damage she does have a physical damage orb as i said she has her own light cone max traces and she's four piece champion of streetwise boxing on the physical set with two piece inert salsodo which is the follow-up attack rope set and my idolons are on e2 yes i've gotten a lot of clear copies from standard and failing 50 50s ting young for me is on mainly she's just here for speed and that's what we really care about so she's at 153 speed nothing else really matters for her Peace. you do Peace technically want attack high attack on her my attack could be a bit higher it is only 2200 looks like i do i did put a lightning damage orb on her i guess or maybe did i oh i did i put a lightning damage orb on it even though it doesn't matter dancing and stance is her best light cone here if you have it and yes i can level these up i'm saving them for one main but this is my traces values for now i, I can mod four piece musketeer of wild wheat with two piece broken heal i can switch out this for this quickly because i'm not using a who's the one i'm not using here i'm sure we're not using bronia so i'll put this one on and i have e6 ting young now topaz is my best built character as she's the character i specifically pulled a lot on so her stats are going to be probably better than your stats unless you are topaz mean <laughs> like i am so i have a fire orb 
I got her own personal light cone as well. You could use sword play if you don't have her light cone. I'll do a guide on Topaz because I also want to do it since she's getting her rerun next patch, I believe. Not max out traces, even though I am a Topaz main. I'm working on it, okay? Um, she's four piece Ash Blazing Grand Duke, which is her best set. Followed by, obviously, Inert Salsodo. And my Eidolons are E2. I will let you know that E2 is not really needed on Topaz. It's really the E1 that gives you the big damage buff. Her E2 just gives Topaz a bit more energy, which allows you to spam your ult a couple more times more often than you would when or without E2. Now, my factor ratio, you can see he's a little bit too high on the crit rate right now, mainly because I don't have a good crit damage chest piece. I did also get his light cone. This was very lucky, by the way. I did one temple and got his light cone from it. Um, not needed as well. You could do sword play. It's not as good on him compared to Topaz because it takes longer to stack, which is why his light cone is something very nice. Again, and for me, any light cone that has ignore targets defense is a like one i want to pull for so that's why i got this one only eights and out of tens for this and he he's not even on his best set which is Pi pioneer of whatever what is it pioneer of deep water or something like that where is this set pioneer starfaring anchor is his best set in the four piece but i don't have it i am doing a two piece two piece with prisoner and ash blazing grand duke for you don't want four piece uh, um, ash blazing because he doesn't stack up the four piece compared to like topaz and uh yes he has attack boots so you actually want attack boots on him not speed compared to topaz who wants speed i'm just like you know she is on speed boots and eidolon's eat oh sorry i don't for duck ratio is nothing i didn't get um and yes yeah, for second half here's my akron she's my second best built character at this time because she's gonna be my new main so that's her stats i do have a person with light cone again she doesn't have a good light cone at this time i mentioned it in my akron guide so i got her light cone she's all tense but her basic attack because you never use her basic attack and currently she's on a two-piece messenger two-piece pioneer this is not really recommended. The only reason why I'm on two-piece messenger is because I have this insane chest piece. As you can see, it has great rolls into attack and crit damage. So once I get a better chest piece, I will be switching off of it. And Sumo is her best rope set. And ideally she wants an attack orb, but I'm actually using a lightning damage orb just because that's all I've gotten at this point. She's at E0 at this time. Kafka could definitely be built a lot better, but this is my Kafka. Uh, she's on lightning damage orb. Light cone, good night, sleep well is her best. Her best is a four star light cone if you have it. And traces are all nines, except for, I mean, basic tech technically is five out of six. She's on four piece band of sizzling thunder. Her ideally best is actually prisoners restrictive or prisoner in deep confinement four piece if you have it but i do not have a good set for this at this time and my lane pieces are honestly quite fine and i'm using base space ceiling station if you meet the speed requirements glamouth is technically a better rope set e0 for me as well max swan you can see her attack so high because she's on an attack orb at the moment i'm just letting you know that and she's on an attack chest piece, not an effect hit rate chest piece, which I need to get. <laughs> I just haven't gotten a good one. I got her Disguise personal light cone because, again, destiny. for me, any light cone that does about 25% more damage compared to other options, I will get. Her light cone, her personal light cone, does about 30% more damage than other options. So this is why I got her light cone. Her traces are 8 out of the 10s. Relic is, this is what Kafka should be using. And this is the ideal for Black Swan as well. 4 piece Prisoner, 4 piece Glad Mouth, Glad Mouth, Glad Moth. Sorry, I'm saying Mouth, it's Glad Moth. And she has no Eidolons. Ron May is the last character 
Again, mainly just built to sustain with lots of HP. And ideally, you want to hit that 160 break effect. And mine's, she's at 170, so we're perfectly fine. You know, I see nothing down there. And we are memories of the past. So Superposition 3 is ideal here. Her life light cone is obviously good too. As I said, I'm currently working on getting her skill and ultimate maxed traces because there's a lot of bonus damage I'm missing from this. Specifically, 2% increased damage and 1.3 or 1.3 percent all type res pen as well relics is a two-piece messenger two-piece feet of shooting meteor or two-piece break effect this is the ideal pieces that she wants the rope i'm using is specifically because i'm doing a dot based team so fleet of the ages is good on her because in a dot based team the only Damage stuff they care about boosting is their attack and I guess break effect as well, which is what one may is here. So I yeah, you don't want broken keel for a dot team as the rope set. Idolons E0. So yes, yeah, so these are all the characters and all their stats, and now let's get into the game. As I said, I already broke this down, but feel free to pause and read this if you did not understand what I was saying earlier. So, since Clara here is the only character that actually attacks, we're just going to get everyone else's buffs up. End with Ratio, and then hit with Clara. We're in trouble now. Okay, so what you're going to do here is buff Clara every time with Ting Young. You might be very confused while you're doing this. Always just basic attack with Topaz. You're gonna want to use your skill with Dr. Ratio here. And. As long as you have, I did want to mention, as long as you have Topaz's trace, uh, one of her particular traces that makes her skill and basic attack follow up, Topaz is even more valuable in this team comp. So what you're going to do is, because I have E2, you don't want to use her ult until after you finish your turn. Which may not make sense for energy bases, but just just trust me. If you, if you don't have E1, you're going to want a basic attack here. If you do hate, have E1, you want to use your skill. Because without E1, you lose way too much damage. You're going to lose your marks on all these enemies. So, and then we're going to immediately ult. The reason why you ult after if you have E2 is because of how the effect works. Basically, you get a 50% attack damage buff with E2 after you ult. But if you use your ult when it's your turn, you immediately lose one turn after you finish your turn. Which is a dumb mechanic. Don't ask me why it's like that. That's why I'm letting you know why I did it like that in particular. Just, uh, it doesn't matter who you hit. Well, I actually generally recommend you hitting the one that has Numbi on it. But to be honest, it doesn't really, really matter. Most of these guys are going to die too quickly for my ult to really matter, but I generally like putting the Trotter because the Trotter is generally the, the more tankier one. And now we're at one buff, so we're going to buff Ting Young here. Or not Ting Young. We're using Ting Young the buff player, huh? That's what I meant to say. Just, again, just want keep Clara's ult up tying up. We aren't going to use it yet because Clara's turn is going to come up before an enemy attacks. And you're going to waste the damage buff on it. There's one now attacking, but it's fine. Okay, so what we're going to want to do is hit this guy. Then 
then we're gonna just hit you. Then we're gonna immediately alt after. I want to protect everyone. Help me, Mr. Sora. You can ult before your skill if you don't have E2, by the way. You don't only do this if you have the market is unpredictable. E2 or higher. Oh wait, I also realized I forgot to move myself over. I do apologize. I normally do remember I was covering that a little bit. There we go. I'm... <laughs> remember this time. So, who has... You have the... Yeah, okay, so, as you can see, like, look. Look at Numbi's position. So, if I don't hit Numbi, that's where Numbi's going. But, if I hit where Numbi is, he goes all the way to the top. Right? So, that's why I'm saying whenever you're, it's singing his basic attack, always hit wherever Topaz's Numbi is marked. So, we're gonna buff up Numbi. Unfortunately, I'm hoping Topaz does not die here. Um, as obviously that would not be ideal. But we're almost done anyway, so. Skill, then ult if you have again E2. You can do ult then skill if you don't have E2. We don't have any skill points, so it's just auto. It doesn't really matter. Because we had one extra turn anyways, and we already got 40,000 points. So, next side, we have Ruan Mei. All of them can... So you're, just do Ruan Mei, then Black Swan, then always hit with Akron. You're gonna do way less damage if you use Kafka's skill. Existence is unity. This team kind of just plays itself. Basically, you just basic attack Stand still. with Black Swan, skill of Kafka and Akron, and basic attack with the wrong way. If you need to refresh the wrong way skill, then basic attack with Kafka if you are running out of skill points. But since you start off with so many here anyways, you for this particular one, the odds of you needing to basic attack with Kafka is... You will kill these guys faster. All will be swept away by the wind. Destiny for oblivion. I wish all these guys are angry, so they're gonna reduce my energy, which is a feel is bad. Nothing I can do about it though. Destiny is an uh relax. I weep for the departed. It is my fall. There we go. We reached max stacks for the lanterns with the fall. I don't know if it's technically a lantern. I just call it a lantern. Now. Stand still. Still waters of oblivion. He has all sources of damage count for it, so even dots. That's why also this game is very good. What do you want to know? <laughs> I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Here we go. We did almost 500,000, and the lantern has fallen. May as well kill them all. Good times. Time pretty much you get the lantern every time Akron alts. That's why I like Akron for this. Pure fiction. Elegance. Eternal. Another journey to justice for oblivion. Didn't hurt. Memories are beneath the waters. Lies an endless abyss. And we really should not have any issues with this side, with these teams at all. Even if you have, I said, if you're using Blade Chain, you also shouldn't have any issues. 
Side 3 for me was very easy. It took a little bit more RNG for me to get side 4 to work. But, I mean, both of them I got 80 ping. Good times. Time to say bye. Boom. Yeah. Stand still. Every petal all will be swept away dum, dum, dum. by the wind. <laughs> Free will or what the still waters of oblivion. Again. <laughs> There you go. An easy 80 kill clear. So as I said, I don't think four three is that difficult at all. If you were struggling with it, maybe just our lower level or which is where I'm thinking the team comps or this particular pure fiction. But otherwise, I, I Hope this video has helped you think of some team comps as i said i recommended characters earlier i showed you how i did it how i got 80k perfect score and which is three stars you don't even need to get 80k if you are struggling even if you only get 30,000 on each side you'll still get a perfect run or a three star run which is all you need to get the jade rewards 80k is just the kind of show off that you can hit the max cap that's more of a flex more than anything <laughs> but yeah it also is probably because i like the follow-up attack play style so i've built my follow-up attack characters very well so yeah if you enjoyed this video consider giving me a like and i hope to see you at one of my future videos